Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for your basic Sorgonomics. And uh, if you subscribe to the newsletter or check out the blog, uh, there was a little bit of discussion about finding your group, finding your people, and uh, and kind of Pittsburgh podcasting. I kind of want to expound on that a little bit uh, on, on this edition. Uh, I've got a few more days to think about it, and I think it's really cool, something that, that's going on here. So um, when it comes to podcasting, um, and I know everybody has uh, that's been podcasting for a long time kind of has this, uh, I, I, not a detest, but I, 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 there's a lot of, um, oh, did you know the podcasting came back? That's funny because I've been doing this the whole time. Um, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know if it's kind of a podcasting hipster thing, perhaps, but uh, it, it's been kind of an interesting reaction. Or I, I have friends that read articles, really good articles, actually. Um, about podcasting in Pittsburgh recently, and 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 just scoff and 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 stop reading at the at the mention of serial, uh, for instance, because that's the cool thing, and that's what everybody's getting into podcasting for and everything, right? Uh, whatever the case may be, um, uh, but the fact is, even before serial, uh, there was a, a hike in podcasting, and I'm not just talking about numbers. I'm not just talking about worldwide. I'm not talking about ESPN getting involved or Kevin Smith or anything like that. Um, I, I'm talking about kind of seeing it firsthand and kind of my barometer for that is what happens at PodCamp Pittsburgh. Uh, for many, many years, uh, I, I've been a part of it. I, it, you know, first as a speaker and eventually co-organizer, at least on the helping with the video side of things. And, um, and, 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 and being, you know, one of the early podcast things, and there was a more of a focus on podcasting because it was a new, fresh thing along with, uh, blogging. We didn't really have Facebook and Twitter, um, as heavily as we do these days, right? But uh, you know, looking back, you know, seeing that, you know, hey, there's there's a lot of conversation happening around podcasting, and then maybe around five or six or so, it felt like uh, it definitely felt like I was the only one doing the podcasting sessions there, and and that meant there weren't as many, um, at least largely confident people doing podcasting. Like I know there was always uh, my friend Doug doing Should I Drink That? There's always Hutch doing Berg's Eye View, and now uh, some version of City Steel City Resistance, for instance. Um, but, uh, but there wasn't that, that, that there wasn't any sort of real big community around it. Um, that changed over the years. You know, I was so excited the one year when, uh, audio shocker showed up and, uh, started doing, a, a did, did their, their presentation on podcasting and got to know those guys and got to be on their show. Like the last episode before they pulled the plug on everything at audio shocker, which was kind of weird. Right. Um, but then, like, I started noticing Lipson coming, and, and I don't know if they hadn't come for a couple of years, or maybe I just didn't notice. But they they definitely showed up with, uh, as in, they were there, and they had uh, hashtag podcaster t shirts, so they were very there. You know what I mean? Um, and going from that to seeing multiple, you know, podcasts being represented there, and feeling like, oh, this podcasting community, the podcasting community felt like it came back um, to discovering that there were others doing this um the, you know epicast came up you know i remember seeing epicast early on at a pod camp uh you know they were there trying to you know i think probably trying to figure out the early days of things um river's life or river jeez i keep messing this up river's edge that we broadcast on actually uh, awesome cast every thursday morning um you know are, are doing their thing they've been around for a year uh, Pittsburgh Podcast Network, which is actually a, a division of, of TNI uh, Talent Network Media, um, and 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 doing a more business uh, minded side of it with some some bigger ish Pittsburgh names, right? And doing a very good job with that and expanding that out. And then and then coming around to find out, you know, I always enjoyed PodCamp because it was the one time a year I got to go and see what everybody else is doing in the same space. Because you get stuck in your ways, you very much get stuck in your ways. And, and, and I'm very concerned, that, and, and especially in the last couple of weeks, I've been very conscious of that because the way I've rearranged things a little bit, I'm worried I'm not um, touching base on a few of the, the things going on out there uh, You know, it was, with other parts, other aspects around podcasting, outside of podcasting, uh, so the social media side of things, since I've, I've shifted my focus a little bit. And um, looking at that, uh, but, it, it, but on the podcast side, you know, it, it's good to um, trying to establish... Um, ongoing conversation. I'm trying to find opportunities to uh, uh, talk with my fellow podcasters, you know, running into Buzzy at, at work hard, which I don't get to nearly enough anymore um, lately uh, because of reasons. Um, but uh, 
or or, or the recent sit downs we've been having with uh, with, with Franco Riffis for Podcast Network, um, with uh, with uh, uh, Brian over and his crew over at Rivers Edge, um, have been really fruitful because there's a lot of hey, um, we figured out this component, you figured out this component, you figured out how to do this component. Where let's mesh a little bit and figure out what helps where for who and kind of figuring out a little bit of a, a mechanism to this that we can all, all, all kind of share in, um, you know, not necessarily as a big network, but even just sharing, sharing little tips of the trade, you know, um, it's one of the nice things about this sort of, um, this sort of thing is you're not entirely in direct competition with each other. Uh, so you get to get out there and be like, this is how I'm finding people are into my thing to, to listen or read my thing over here or, or follow my tweets over here or try to sell this thing over here. Um, they, they we're all partially in competition for time, but in a lot of ways, you know, the people that I'm talking to with my awesome cast of wrestling man shows or even this programming uh, is fairly different than what you jag off and, and Craig Wolfley and Jim Crenn are doing over podcast network, uh, which is very different than what, what, you know, what's happening at river's edge with their talk radio music kind of combination. So, so, there's enough, you know, diversity there. And even with other wrestling podcasts, I don't mind talking with them because, again, uh, I think that the audience that listens to the Wrestling Mayhem show is vastly different than the audience that listens to Justin Labar's Chair Shot Reality that he does a fantastic job with. Not the kind of show I want to put on, not the kind of talk I want to put on, but he hits that demographic really well. And it's definitely more of a... Um, broader niche than what i do with the way that we talk about wrestling on our shows but i'll take that you know i'll take that kind of uh for whatever reason people come around come across our version of talking about pro wrestling and when they latch on they latch on hard they're in our our, our facebook groups and everything um so so talking with say justin about hey how do you handle this how do you do this you know doesn't interact and even having him on my show and other guys like another wrestling podcast or other wrestling podcasts that we've represented over over years and and same with tech podcasts and everything you know um so when i'm talking about finding your group i'm finding you know talk about finding those other people in those same spaces you know that you can uh talk with have a coffee with have a group with we're doing a sorgatron media coffee here coming up on uh, march 19th for instance and i try to i'm trying to keep these going uh that we're doing them monthly and again, it's just an opportunity to get people together in the meat space, you know, um, getting getting people together that are creative, or curious about things. I'm kind of opening up more and more. It used to be just I'd, I'd invite people that we're collaborating with. And I do primarily do that. But I'm also trying to like, hey, do you want to talk to us about podcasting? Do you want to talk to us about social media? Do you want? Are you curious about what we're doing? You know, let it be kind of an open house. But again, just keep, get people together to talk shop a little bit. And you never know when you're getting those um curious and creative minds together what can come from it right what can come from that what can what what can you build out of that out of that sort of idea so um so that's why i think it's important to find your group and find these opportunities and if you can't find these opportunities i understand not everybody's in the middle of pittsburgh that they can find a group like this um i think that's why it's also important to look for events like podcast pittsburgh like podcast movement like these social media conferences and unconferences and meetups and, and then things like that. Maybe you do have to travel to the nearest city or a couple of cities away uh, to, to find something like this. Or, or, or maybe you'd be surprised if you put a couple of flyers up or, or go on meetup, meetup.com and, and, and see, you know, is there a, a, you know, I'm, I'm from up in Mercer County originally. Is there a Mercer County social media meetup, for instance? I honestly don't know. I haven't checked. But if I was in Mercer County, I almost said stuck in Mercer County. If I was in a Mercer County kind of situation, if I was in uh, the middle of Ohio kind of situation, maybe okay, maybe less so because it's probably mostly farmland. You know, I would be kind of scrounging to look for those like minds and trying to bring them together, bring something on, or create those groups. Message boards and groups still work very well for that kind of stuff. Um, and, and but again, I, I think I think the more and more you cross pollinate those kinds of ideas. And those kinds of minds, I think it's going to be very, very beneficial to you and, and the community for, for what you're, you're working with. So thanks very much. Check out everything at Sorgatron.com. Sign up for the newsletter. We'll have a new one coming up Monday. Uh, check out. It, it, it gives you a little bit of everything going on, on around the network, as well as a little bit of write-up that I do every week. Or sometimes I have a guest blogger or something like that that's uh, contributing that, uh, that, that. That hopefully starts you off on your Monday uh, very well. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. 
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.